Can oils be ingested? And what are the risks associated with taking oils by mouth? So I've been using oils internally for over 10 years. I don't overdo it. There is such a thing as overdoing it. And actually, this is not well known, but... But there's something crucial about it that most people don't know. We'll get to that in a moment. Let's just wind back and start as we explore the benefits of essential oils. Are you curious about incorporating essential oils into your daily routine? Join us in this enlightening session as we delve into the versatile world of essential oils. You'll discover the power of oils like peppermint and lemon and lavender, an immunity blend of tea tree and frankincense. Gain insights into various applications from topical use to internal consumption, providing valuable tips for optimum benefits. Uncover the secrets to aromatherapy, learn about the immune, boost, immune boosting blend and witness the magic of these oils in action. So don't miss out on the chance to enhance your well-being and explore the wonders of essential oils. Watch for a journey into the realm of natural wellness. Let's get into it. Please like and subscribe. So I've been using oils for, for over 10 years. I was a rep with doTERRA. I was terminated by doTERRA in October of 2023. I was a blue diamond. That was my highest rank. And I was also a Canadian founder. And over the, like, I never used essential oils before doTERRA. They are high quality oils. And, you know, just from pure experience and other people sharing their stories and experiences, yeah. I learned so much about essential oils. Uh, I'm not a doctor, I'm not an aromatherapist, I'm not trained in anything specific, but I have been using them internally, topically, aromatically for over 10 years. Because of that, I, I do have a wealth of knowledge. I just wanna point out right now that a good friend of mine is a doctor of natural medicine and her name is Dr. Michelle Cook. Uh, Michelle is spelled M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E -L -L -E, and Cook is C-O-O-K. She has a website, so drmichellecook.com and she has an essential oil section. So drmichellecook.com forward slash essential oils. She's got digital downloads there and she's also written a number of books on essential oils, which I have in my possession. One is called Pain Erasers. And this one, especially for us women, essential oils for hormone bliss. She has recipes in there. She talks about the proper usage of essential oils. This is, you know, if you want someone with that science background and that the educational background, and some people like to read books, this is your go-to. Michelle is fantastic. I'm more of the... Um, experiment girl like I've got lots of stories that I can share uh and you know one one of the big thing big things that I want to say right now is that an oil that works for me may not work for you just because we're also biochemically different it's the same with supplements right Ryan and Lisa I mean you know this like the super greens are fabulous for some people and other people they really struggle with it uh and sometimes you know we have to do I don't know if you know about muscle testing, but that's a, a story for another day. But um, that's what I want to say. And then I also want to just give a disclaimer. Uh, my information is for information only. The products I discuss are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent disease. All right. Boom. So Love that intro. Thank you, Jane. That's awesome. The, uh, so it's more like a of the people, by the people, for the people thing here. I love it. Like a license to learn here. Once you start with essential oils, it's about experimentation. And I love that about you, Jane. I love the fact that we're coming at it from that approach because people, it's very relatable. And uh, that's what I'm hoping we can get out of this today. So Jane, before you get into going through each oil and just the way you incorporate them in your daily practice, can you just answer the biggest question that we get by far, which is, can oils be ingested? And what are the risks associated with taking oils by mouth? Great question. So I've been using oils internally for over 10 years. I don't overdo it. Um, there is such a thing as overdoing it. And actually, this is not well known, but having had discussions with very um, educational people, 
there is a thing where if you overuse, it's like anything else, right? Too much, it can do damage. Um, sometimes people will break out and this not just internal, by the way, this can be overuse topically or what have you. Sometimes people's bodies will shut down and they will start breaking out like crazy with rashes. And that's their body's way of saying stop. And you may need to stop for weeks, months, even years at a time. So I'm, I'm a big believer of less is more when it comes to essential oils, you do need to experiment and um, for people that are very sensitive, they should be using a carrier oil along with their pure oils. So a carrier oil can be olive oil, jojoba oil, grapeseed oil, you know, those types of th those types of things, right? So it helps dilute it. And if you have a, an accident where you drop too much on your skin, don't go for water. The water will make it worse. It will sting. You need to grab a carrier oil to, to, to get it subsided, okay? Oils, you do have to be very careful getting in your eye. It will sting like a banshee. So if you do get it in your eye by accident, grab your carrier oil and, and just start dabbing it to, to get the sting out. There, there won't be any like significant harm or anything. It's just that it stings. So getting back to internal use though, it should be a matter of preference. Uh, and you want to be careful with hot oils. There are different ways that you can take oils internally. One of the ways that I take internally is I use a veggie cap like this. So I pour the oils into the cap and I take it with food. So it goes down nicely. And um, you may want to take it even with an oil too, like olive oil again. And Usually you just need one or two drops. Like I, I fill these things right up to the top. Again, I, I know my body. Um, and the reason why I like the internal is it, I mean, you don't have to taste it, right? If you're getting it on your tongue and stuff. It, ugh. Um, so easy way for that to go down. And um, I think the main reason, Ryan and Lisa, the reason why people were afraid of internal use is because the oils were not pure. That's the real issue. If you go to Walmart and you look at a bottle of essential oil, it says flammable on it. So, you know, there's no education with something like that. It, probably people don't even read the bottle. They should absolutely not be taking a bottle that says flammable on it. Shouldn't be taking it at all. But that's the real reason. Um because, I mean, let's face it, we take a lot of stuff internally that are not good for us, but we're, we're still okay. <laughs> I mean, alcohol is considered poison, but a lot of people drink alcohol, right? We're okay. So, again, it's a preference thing and also to be careful and also experiment and really pay attention to how your body feels. Sounds good. All right, let's get into it, Jane. We are going to start with peppermint. If you can grab your peppermint bottle. Got it. Okay. So if you can just put your hand out. Don't nod, are you good? You got your peppermint? Oh, he's, 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 he's Okay. He's okay, no mute. problem. All right. So what we're going, going to comes. do is one drop, one, one drop on the palm of our hand. Okay. Sometimes two comes out, but try to just get one. There, one, one drop. Guys, good. Okay, we're going to rub our hands together. Now we are going to inhale deeply. Woo! Yeah, baby. That'll open up the sinuses. Okay, <laughs> now you want to take it a step further. <laughs> See, Ryan? <laughs> you want to take it a step further, and we make a little, a little ball with our hands. Okay, so like this. We're going to inhale deeply. Be prepared to cough a little bit here. <coughs> See? Yeah. <laughs> Go. Totally normal. It's cleaning out the lungs. Okay. You got that, guys? Okay. <laughs> oh, my God. Now take your hands, and you're going to just rub the back of your neck. 
you making us do things, Jane. I, I know. <laughs> us, okay, this? so do you see how powerful that was? That was yeah. one drop of peppermint essential oil. We did it aromatically. We did, oh, one more thing. I'm missing an important part. Ooh. You know how we still have some on the palm of our hand? Put your thumb on the palm of your hand and put it on the roof of your mouth. It's going to freshen your entire mouth. Don't need to chew gum when you got peppermint oil. Fresh so, oh, yes. So we just did, we did aromatically inhaling. We did internal and we did topical. So the beauty of peppermint is that it's very invigorating. If you're driving in your car and you're getting a little sleepy, mm -hmm. this is the time that you would like to have that little pick me up. Okay. It can open up the airways. Um, it's a great one. Um, a little tip for sales, and I can see Nodder doing this. Oh gosh! You keep, you keep you keep your peppermint oil in your pocket. A lot of the guys I can see carrying them in your pocket, and I just picture Nodder pulling this out and go, "Hey, bro, have you done the the peppermint?" Bro, trick? I, okay. you know me too well. <laughs> <laughs> bro. I have done this. I have done this trick at trade shows, at vendor shows, and I get automatic sales for peppermint. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. And you think about it, a, probably a 15 mil bottle like this has about 250 drops. Mm. This costs next to nothing. A bottle yeah. like this, we already know is so inexpensive. This is probably what a penny a drop. I don't even know what it is, but you know, this is going to last a while if you only use a drop or a drop a day. All right, we've covered peppermint. Let's move on to lemon. That was awesome, Jane. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, now lemon. Speaking, Jane, have you ever heard this with peppermint? I was reading something about how good it is to to rub on um, your arms and legs before a workout. Yeah, yeah. Uh, some people do do that. Yeah, it's uh, again, it's just invigorating. Like gets gets the blood flowing and everything. That it's right. it's good. Um, yeah, and even on top of your clothes, you you can do that. You know, like just patting down. Hey, it's Jane, Jane, Jenny, Jenny just wrote in too. Said, so tell them to close their eyes with peppermint. And it's funny, she's probably right. My eyes are burning a little bit. Maybe yeah. I, I think I ended up with two or three drops. To be honest, on my palm. So I, okay, I fair enough. I, I think if I had just done one drop, Ginny, maybe it wouldn't be as bad, but I'm, my eyes are watering. So you're, you're be careful. Nice disclaimer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to yeah. have some explaining to do on my next Zoom that's coming up in two minutes. I love you oh. all. Thank you, Jane, for being here. I got to jump off. Okay. You got my number, Ryan. Lisa, you're the best. You all Thank love. You, love you awesome. all. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to move on to the lemon. So lemon is probably one of my favorite oils because it is so inexpensive and it's so multi-purpose. So I actually make my own homemade um, cleaners. This one I've got labeled glass cleaner, but any type of spritzer, you can clean your counters. Um, if you want to spruce up your dish soap, you can put a drop right into your into your dish soap uh, um, dispenser. Um, lemon is the thing that is a degreaser. So you can clean your entire oven with a bottle of essential oil because you drop it right onto the grease, let it sit for a little, little bit, and then it's going to wipe right off. And it will remove, um, if you have a child and it gets a gum in their hair, you can help get it out with the lemon oil. You can, um, if you have um, like a sticker on a bottle and you need to get it off, put a bit of lemon oil and it'll wipe it right off. If you have a coffee mug that's full of stains, put the lemon oil in there, sit there and it'll wipe right off. It's a super duper cleaner. If you do choose to use lemon um, or any essential oil in your water, I would not use a plastic container, right? Cause the it will eat the plastic eventually. So use a stainless steel mug, cup, thermos, whatever, uh, or, um, you know, glass, whatever, that's totally fine. Uh, so anything like you can use, um, I have dryer balls and I put essential oils on my dryer balls all the time. Um, you can actually put the oil right into the washing machine. Um, a lot of them have those pull out things. And when you put your laundry detergent in, you can actually put a couple of drops of lemon into just helps fight the mold and bacteria and that sort of thing. And it spruces it right up. So great cleanser oil, 
Okay. Tea tree also has some of those same benefits as cleaning as well. So we'll move on from the lemon and we're now going to talk about lavender. Um, also, just while I'm on the talk about um, citrus oils, because lemon's considered a, a citrus oil. Oils that are citrus are towards the sun. It means uplifting. When you have your oils that come out of the ground, they're your earthing, your grounding oils, right? That's why lavender is, is better, is good for sleep. So when you have um, oils that perk you up, a sun thing, that, that's how you kind of separate those two, okay? So getting into lavender, this is considered your calming oil. And some people, all they need is a drop on their pillow at night. That's it. Um, some people like to rub it behind their their ears, their you know um, their temples. Um, they the wrists are good. Uh, some people have that jewelry that you can buy with the little stones, and they like to have it on on those black little lava stones. There's many different. Oh, there you go, Lisa. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I have a little. It's a little black one and there's like three beads on it that are the ones that absorb the oil and then you put it on there and that's, yeah, I use these all the time. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. And um, of course, very good in the diffuser. We haven't talked about diffusers yet. Um, you can get your diffusers anywhere. Um, if you're finding that your diffusers are not working properly, it's because you probably haven't cleaned them out. You should run it through with vinegar to clean up all the pieces of the diffuser Diffusing is actually quite an amazing thing. And I've got some stories to share with you about that. So the limbic system, I don't know how much you guys know about that, Ryan and Lisa. Yeah, this is um, what deals with memories, emotions, and stimulations. And the molecules from the essential oils from an inhalation go to the olfactory bulb and, and to your limbic system. So what's really interesting is that certain smells can be associated for good or for bad. Childhood memories can often evoke trauma or, or good things. That's why you have some people that say, I hate the smell of lavender. And then when you talk to them, you find out it's because the nursing home that they went into when their grandfather was, was dying or something, it's, it smelled like that, it reminded them of that. On the flip side, it can give good memories too. So it's very interesting how certain smells can um, can stay with you. Um, and I have two stories to share about diffusing. So, um, they're true stories. Um, the one situation was the bit of a cranky man, uh, married and had teenage kids and the wife decided to start diffusing with some really lovely citrus oils. And she did it for two weeks, did not tell the husband and the teenage kids came back to their mother and they said, what is going on with dad? He is not near as cranky as he normally is. So this is why I think it's kind of a good way to experiment is just by diffusing because you're not telling someone, oh, put oils on you. It's just in the house. And then another thing, another true story, my friend, um, she knows her brother doesn't like lavender. So he came over to her house and she had lavender diffusing and she didn't tell him on purpose because she knew he was going to complain about the lavender smell. So he comes in, he's like, oh, what's this? something really nice? What you got in that diffuser? Really nice. And she says, oh, she didn't tell him, right? So they go and do their things and they come back. It's about time to go. And she, he goes, it's really nice in here. Like what's in there? She goes, it's lavender and you're an idiot. <laughs> Yes, she wanted to say that about her brother, but that's, you know, the important thing about something like so easy to diffuse, whether you put one oil in the diffuser or several oils, and that's sometimes an experimental thing. There's tons of recipes online about using what blends, you know, to make a nice um, thing, like especially real estate agents that want to um, have hope and houses coming through. That, that's great. All right. So we've covered lavender. Now we're going to go over to immunity. I was really excited when you guys put together this blend, which is clove, cinnamon, orange, rosemary, and eucalyptus. This is a blend that uh, over the years I have taken internally. And again, I love it with my, with my veggie cap. And just a note about the veggie cap, these dissolve. So you don't want to make your veggie caps ahead of time 
you'll waste your oils. Make them at the time and then swallow them. Uh, these are all immune uh, boosting oils. Um, it's It smells great. Um, now, some of these oils, you do want to be careful about sun sensitivity. If you're going to put these oils on topically, be careful going out to the sun because you could be more sensitive to burning. Okay. Not an issue for internal. Um, but these, these five oils, they're absolutely fantastic. Like even on their own, they're fantastic, but to have as a blend and also just to show you another little trick here. Um, and again, you can use this as if you're in an area, you're in an airport, you're on a plane and you just feel like you need to clean your ha hands. You're not near a, a wash basin. You can rub it on like what we did earlier, but even just on the top here of the, you can see I'm waiting for it to come out. There, two came out. You like so how I'm that uh, meter dropper works on that. It doesn't just free flow. Right. The, the, yes. the cap on that—that that was specific. These are the, these are a more expensive dropper, so that they really are calibrated to one drop. If you notice, excellent cheap point. Just pours out. Excellent point, Ryan. Thank you for saying that. So I just rubbed this in, and if I want to just do a quick little, there, I licked it. It's in my mouth. I've just now given myself a little boost, right? So easy, I can just rub it in, you know, whatever I want to do, I just get it on me. You can put it on a little scarf, um, you know, hold it up. That would be a secondary form of inhalation. I'm telling you, and you know what I have to say with these oils, you will never be stopped by TSA in the airport. 15 mil is safe for carry on in your purse. Okay, so on guard, sorry, um, immunity, pardon me. <laughs> That's okay, hey. <laughs> um, the, this blend, I mean, I've covered some of the uses, um, but also for cleaning, like washing your floors with something like this. Oh man, you're going to have, your house is going to smell fantastic, right? Just mixing it in with some water. Um, and I mean, really you, you can do anything, like the dryer balls, the, um, if you don't have a dryer ball, just grab an old cloth that you don't care about Put it on and throw it in the dryer. So many things you can do. Which oil is that, Jane? This is the immunity blend. Oh, okay. You're still on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now we're going to move on to tea tree. So tea tree, one of the biggest things, athlete's foot. If you got any fungus between your toes, oh, that this thing works fantastic. Also good, very uh, um, disinfecting. If you've got a wound, this is an oil that you could put on the wound to help speed up the healing. Uh, and, uh, you know, like if you've got a whiteboard, I have a whiteboard here. When I need to clean it off, I just use this on um, on a Kleenex and I, I wipe it off. So you don't have to buy those chemical cleaners. And um, same thing. You can do drop on your hand, just inhale. Um, another thing that you can do, you can really make your oils last a long time this way is just inhale right from the bottle. You'd be amazed at how much benefit that you can get from this, okay? And um, yeah, like you just, you know, keep it, it's so handy to keep this around. It's just a little, like you can hide it if you don't want anybody to see what you're doing. I say the tea tree one is one of my favorites to put on my dryer balls when I'm washing um, our or either the dry ball and in the washer when I'm washing um, clo gym clothes or the kids' sport clothes or like really nasty, germy, bacteria-ridden clothes because it really takes that scent out and kills the bacteria. That's right. And, you know, even um, for a little pimple, you know, because it's antibacterial, you just, you know, for the teenagers, they can do do something like that too, right? Um, if, if you want to have your garbage can smelling better, a few drops going in. It's anything you can think of that's help gonna, gonna help with bacteria and so on and nasty smells. Um, putting them in um, stinky gym sneakers, your gym bags, fantastic. Is there All photosensitivity right. to tea, tea tree? What's that about sensitivity? Photosensitivity from the sun, direct no, sun? No, no, it's not, no. Now we're gonna get into frankincense. This is the king of all oils. Um, this passes the blood-brain barrier. 
And there's a saying that Dr. Michelle Cook came out with, which is, if in doubt, pull the frankincense out. If you don't know what oil to use, grab your frank. It is very good for brain. Um, and again, we've done this little experiment, you know, memory issues, just come and sniff. And you're, you feel like your brain's working better again. Um, you know, they, any, um, again, don't want to use uh, names for diseases or anything like that. Got to be careful, but memory issues, this is the one you want. It's also very, very good for your skin. And I want to tell you right now, tried and true and tested. I've done it. I have a redhead son, sunburns, lavender and frankincense are the two oils that you need to use together for sunburn relief. Use a carrier oil to go with it works every time. And also I, I'm saying this now because I don't want to forget for those of you that suffer from seasonal allergies, we have something, it's a tri blend, which is lavender, lemon, and peppermint. When you put the three of them together, you will help that relief with the seasonal threats. So you can do that in the veggie cap, you can put it in the diffuser and you can do it topically. Um, lavender is like a natural antihistamine. And so the, the puffiness can go down and that sort of thing. Okay. Um, back to the Frank skin issues. I would, I would put it directly on it. It's not an oil that stings. It's not considered a hot oil. A hot oil would be like oregano or cinnamon, cassia, that kind of thing. Um, and emotions, emotions like this is why um, in yoga classes and meditation classes, they like oils like frankincense and like mood enhancing oils because for my new management, because that's the time that, you know, you're just sort of calm and letting it in and really let the oils do its job. So yeah, that, Again. this is the key right there. Yeah. I think that's Again. the main coverage, Ryan. Yep. Oh, I love it. Um, uh, let's take a, just a quick pause yep. only because I think our YouTube stream might have dropped, which has been happening a lot lately. It's very annoying, but I might, let me just punch record on this. Hang on. Okay, Jane. So as you were saying about frankincense, anything else you want to finish up with, or do you want to go into Q and A? Q and A. All right, cool. All right, let's do it. All right. So... I am going to reference some um, Q&A that has come in. While I'm working on this YouTube thing, a lot of questions came in on pets. What about citrus? What about some of the others? What's the risk with pets in the house? Okay. The answer I can give about that is Dr. Kelly Mark. Uh, she's on my Live Good team. She is Canada's oily vet. She has a Facebook page. She is the go-to person for pet questions. Yes, that's who I always refer yeah. me of the pet yeah. questions to. Because like I say, I mean, our oils are pure or 100% pure. So, you know, besides any, and all I've really read about, about pets is certain, is really topically and, and orally. It's more like diffusing in your home. There should be no concern. But again, love having Canada's oily vet on our side because mm -hmm. uh, she's, yeah, it's great reference. Mm-hmm. Okay, I love that. That's awesome. All right, uh, let's go back to the Q&A real quick. YouTube looks like it's up and running, so we're fine. Um, where do you get your veggie caps? Probably just from Amazon, I imagine? Any health food store. Any health food store even? Okay. I think Amazon sells them too, if it, that's something. Someone's asking about nasal inhaler tubes for aromatherapy. Is that something? Yeah, that you, you can buy nasal inhalers. I've actually never used one but it's a thing that you can buy and, 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 and try that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You have to be careful with your nasal cavity because it's kind of, it's pretty tender. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, um, nebulizers, you know, if you're, if you've got a, a cavity that you can put the oils in with something with something else like silver or whatever, that's another way to get it into you. I love nebulizers. I want to also remind folks to watch the first uh, Zoom. There's a lot of questions that are, answered, that are actually answered in that Zoom that are not answered in this one. But I do like that you said this, Jane, about the lim 
the limbic system. We did talk about it in that in the first Zoom, and I said how important the olfactory sense is because it does travel the cranial nerve very short, and it, it goes right into the limbic system, which controls emotions and behavior. So spot on about that. And I think that you saying that actually just, I was like, oh, that's right. We did talk about that previously too. Photosensitivity, just, Jane, what are some oils that can commonly cause photosensitivity? What does it look like if somebody has photosensitivity and what can they do about it? Yeah, so they if they're gonna burn much quicker, right? If they've got, if they're putting oils on their skin and they're going out sitting on the sun, they're going to burn much quicker. So that's what they have to watch for. So, you know, if that's the, like, you know, maybe don't go out right away, like um, give it a good 12 hours or so. Um, in terms of metabolizing the oils in your body, it takes about four hours to go through the liver. Another quick tips too. Um, in 22 seconds, the essential oil mo molecules reach the brain. In two minutes, they'll be found in the bloodstream. And in 20 minutes, they will affect every cell in the body. Awesome. Thank you yeah. for the fact. Okay. And one quick, one quick thing about the limbic system and the olfactory system. If you don't have a sense of smell or you have issues with your sense of smell, because I've had this problem over the years with mine, it'll still work. Even if you can't smell it, still get the benefits going to the brain. And then which carrier oils are, are you, do you suggest or say for which particular oil, like does tea tree have to be matched with yojoba or like, what are some, some yeah. ideal carrier no, oils? Yeah. So it doesn't have, yeah, it doesn't matter. Just any carrier oil with any essential oil, um, fractionated coconut oil is a fraction of the coconut and it's always in a liquid form. But if you don't have that available and you just have like the solid coconut oil, grab that and, and, and rub, rub it on. Most people have olive oil in their pantry. So at least they've got something should they get it in their eye. But I like grapeseed oil. I like jojoba oil and coconut oil. Okay. Awesome. A yeah. uh, little bit about diffuser. So I've told people that not to go so big on a diffuser, typically look for something a little smaller, like the hundred ML, but if it's plastic, which most are look for BPA free, look for something that has a timer, um, and then of course, make electric, I mean, there are the wick based ones as well. What are some, what's some other advice you would give people shopping for a diffuser? Cause live good at this time, even though we are going to launch a diffuser does not have one right now. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you want to look at a warranty. Um, I've had people say before that they've bought stuff from Amazon and it was cheap and boy, was it cheap in quality because it didn't even last a few months. So sometimes buying a higher quality one with a good warranty is the one to look for. Um, you do need to clean your, your diffusers because some oils are thicker, not that we have the, in this situation, but um, an oil like vetiver, for example, is a thick oil and it can gum up your diffuser. That's the kind of thing that you have to watch. You can just wipe it out with a soft cloth after you're finished with it. I mean, not every time or anything like that, but just, just keep an eye on it. What, what, what would you tell someone that's looking at it from an anti-aging perspective? What's the best combo that we offer right now for say wrinkles, uh, just some of this obvious aging signs of the skin? That's a good question because you know what? We had a guy that put frankincense around his eyes. That's and after thir okay. No, I do do that. I, I've okay. actually it. And all my son and all my age spots, my son spots. Perfect on oh. the age spots. <laughs> yep. Yes. Yeah. Wow. So he, yeah, he did it for, I think like about 30 days straight and um, people were going around asking him if he had a facelift. Oh. That's all they did. Yeah. Skin tightening. Awesome. I know. Is it it's skin so tightening good. or is it, re, is it sort of nourishing the collagen production? Do you have any idea how that? I, I don't know exactly how it works. Just, I just knew that frank, frankincense is very good for the skin, but you know, that repeated use, obviously this guy did a good job doing it every day. Awesome. Um, yeah, a <laughs> that's a key right there. Toenail fungus, and I imagine he's referencing the tea tree oil. Um, also with molds and, and, and the air conditioning system, the HVAC, I do know that people are, are putting it and fusing it into their system. That's, I think, a professional application. But a lot of utility for tea tree in the mold, the fungus, obviously mold and fungus, but bacteria, yeast, parasites. Absolute, absolutely. Like even when I've gone to a hotel, and you know how they have those units on the side of the wall? Right. And like I've gone in there and pulled out the screen and put essential oils on the screen 
Mm -hmm. put it back in. So at least I'm cleaning the air a bit. You can um, put oils on cotton balls and put them around the house. You can put them by your car vents, you know, and um, peppermint is actually very good at um, keeping spiders away. I have one a friend of mine who had a problem with a possum and she used peppermint and it drove the possum away. So peppermint possum oil. <laughs> what do you put in your water, Jane? Do you add like a drop of lemon or peppermint? What is your... I don't do it all the time. I just I just do it when I feel like it. And how much? Yeah. Would you just put one drop one of One drop. Yeah, one drop. Oh, a tip with that. Add a little pinch of Himalayan salt to your nice. water. Will help with you because you know how it sits, the film sits on the top of the water. So you, you got to mix it right. in. Right. Yeah. Right. Really no, good for you to have the Himalayan salt with the oils and, and, and drink that down. You know, don't keep it in your mouth and swish because a lemon is like acidic in your mouth, right? You don't want to wreck your enamel. But most people don't. If you're concerned about that, use a straw too. Goes right in. But again, I always caution overuse. I've made, I've done a lot of stuff. Like kids, you should be diluting if you're going to use your oils on on kids. You know, like the belly button is a good spot to put oils in, but um, you know, if you're going to put like a little bit of peppermint in your belly button for digestion, I, I put any anybody who's sensitive, put the co coconut oil on or or whatever carrier oil. It try always try that out first. Jane, I wish I had unlimited time because the comments are coming in. There's so many right. that are just saying how great the the oil is for them. Like you said, for each person, it's different, and what they do. Uh, Lisa, any questions for Jane before? Well, I think the biggest thing is because a lot of these questions are coming in. Um, they have you know specific uses, like what oil for menstrual cramp, what oil for blood sugar, this and that. Do you have a resource? I know you. I know um, Dr. Michelle Cook has her books, but say somebody doesn't want to get a book, they just want to look online. Do you have like a go-to where you can get recipes and recommendations and stuff like that? I mean, you you can just Google. Um, right. Dr. Michelle Cook does have the digital downloads. Um, okay. yeah. And then, um, a lot of times, yeah, you can Google if you don't want to buy books, go to a library and check stuff out. Um, uh, and, um, I just, I just find it fascinating because, you know, some people have had such great, um, great testimonials and, and stories about how oils have helped them. And then they say, okay, well, this worked for me. And then the person goes and tries it and it didn't work for them. So you have to keep playing around. Yeah. You know, lavender. Oh, uh, I, another little tip. Okay. Mosquito bites. For me, tea tree would always be the one that helped with the itchiness. But for some people, I was finding that it was a lavender. Then now what I do, it's immunity. That one takes the itch away from me hands down every time. So again, playing around with it. Uh, I've seen a couple of questions come in about sunburn, I guess in any type of inflammatory skin response. Do you have any recommendations for how to treat inflamed skin like sunburn? Uh, yeah, the, the, the lavender and the frankincense. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, yeah. If you're asking questions and you don't think your question may have been answered, just make sure you rewatch because I'm seeing some come in like now talking about allergies, like she just went over seasonal allergies. So um, a lot of the, the answers have been answered. Um, and then again, going back to the, just like, can these be ingested orally? And the reason why you wouldn't is if you're using an oil that's not pure, um, uh, so you know, that's why we really advertise that ours are like 100% pure. We go through all the stringent testing to make sure that these can be used oily. And none of our oils currently are any of those considered like a hot oil or one you have to take extra precautions. So that's really good to know now with this select of the six oils that we have. And another point too, about some oils that are in health food stores, they are cut with olive oil. Olive oil goes rancid. And this is another reason why you don't want to be taking um, essential oils that are mixed with other fillers and other synthetics. You don't know what is in there. The un, the essential oil industry is unregulated. And Ryan, you found that out big time, right? Big time. When you were doing everything. And 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 you don't have to put stuff on the bottle. And so you have to be very careful. Um, my friend Bobby Joe has extremely good nose. 
And the first thing she did when she got her Live Good oils, she sniff tested them. And in the past, if she has sniffed an oil that is not right, her nose will tell her immediately. Well, all six oils passed this, her sniff test. That works for me. And I could tell as soon as I opened them that they were totally fine. You know, doing the peppermint trick. I mean, that was a good example of how how your body was. Um, and it was everything that happened was normal. The coughing, your eyes getting a little bit um, tingly there, Ryan, all normal. Right. And um, Dr. Cook wrote in just, you know, remembering that there is a lot of misinformation online. So, you know, Google, you can find anything on Google. So you just search it in. It's going to give you an answer no matter what. But a great, another great resource though, is if you type into say Instagram, you type in like certified essential oil therapist, you'll get some accounts and then kind of scroll through their stuff and see if it's information that's like useful for you. See if there's some recipes, see if there's some tips, follow that person. That's a really good way to get these great recipes in there. Because again, like Jane was saying, there's recipes for anything that you can do with essential oils. So asking some specific questions like this right in here, like, we're not going to go and, and list off all these different recipes, but you can find them. But again, make sure you are using a reliable source. And again, finding a certified oil therapist that you can follow online on social media is a really great start. Okay, just, awesome. Just a quick okay. note about oils for cooking. Um, you have to be extra careful with how much oils you use for cooking. Otherwise, you can ruin your meal. Um, and I'm talking toothpick amount. If you have a little lasagna and you dip a toothpick into your peppermint and put it in the middle, try that and see how you like it. <laughs> I mean, you can use the oils in for your, some people make raw chocolate and they like to use the different oils in that tastes great. But again, just be very careful. Less is more. And you don't want to be, if you're boiling something and you put the oils in, um, you, you know, you, you don't want to, it, it can start to destroy the oils. And also real quickly, I had a really bad cold recently and I did a steam tent. So I boiled the water and then I let it cool down and then I put the oils in and I put a towel over my head and I just let the oils and man, oof, it just goes right into you like, and then you're coughing up, whatever. So that's another great way to um, clean up the uh, germs from a cold and all that. Yeah. So how are we feeling, Jane? We feel like we did, did a good job covering things in I think 40 so. minutes today. Yeah, I think so too. Awesome. Jane, tell everybody how they can find you or reach you. And also, if you could highlight those resources one more time. Yes. Okay. So drmichellecook.com slash essential oil. She has that essential oil section there. And she's got the digital downloads. She can also check out the rest of her website. Um, she's, she has the books available, as I said, excellent. Um, she's written many books and, um, she's a wealth of knowledge. She's been using oils longer than I have. She has huge experience. Uh, so that's for Michelle. And then, um, I, I have a public Facebook page, Jane Mullen. You can follow me M U L L I N spelled that way on the zoom here. And, um, I just say, in, in, enjoy your oils, like just go play with them. And, um, you know, um, I know that at some point we, we may get more, right, Ryan, we may down the road and we may get some that you can buy individual, uh, yeah, buy separately Yep. all in good time, but you guys did a great job on the sourcing and the testing. And, uh, it was a great story that you shared. I, I love the transparency about how the two oils failed the test, the tea tree and the, um, I believe peppermint failed peppermint. the test and you had to go back and, and that's, that's what we need. Agreed. Agreed. All right, Lisa, any closing thoughts? Um, no, no, I don't think I have any besides Jane. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you coming on here and sharing your knowledge base with us and, uh, you know, providing yourself again, available for people to possibly reach out to you as well as Dr. Michelle Cook and uh, Canada's oily vet. All right, guys, that was awesome. And if you missed the first part of this, go back and watch it. Do the peppermint test with your friends and family. <laughs> and uh, until next time, we'll see you guys. Thank you for watching. Bye now. Thank you. Bye guys. Thank you.